Another effector is inheritance that's used a lot and it's important. The, in, it inherit or uh, pass some <clears throat> information from one cloner to another cloner. The first main uh, of the usage of this uh, is this. If you have a plane and you have a cube here, uh, we scale it, sorry. We scale it down <clears throat> and assign a different material to that cube. For example, a reddish material to that cube and give that cube cloner uh, to <clears throat> we bring the cube under the cloner. Uh, as you can see, it's in a grid mode. We change it to object. I explained the uh, cloner before. You can go back and review that lessons. And again, uh, I <clears throat> explain the effectors one by one. Please go back and uh, look at the previous lesson from plane to down. Okay, the hierarchy is important, and uh, we have to assign this object as a clone in <clears throat> default is distributed surface you can change it to the vertex if you want and holding alt and click and click to uh, uh, disappear the plane this is our first cloner i change it to the plane uh, cloner to define it better <clears throat> We are, can assign another cloner, this sphere, and again, exactly that cube that you want. It's not important, but here you can do it. We have another cloner that, again, this cube, it's not important, any object, but we have to assign some object to the, another cloner. And you can hide the cube if you wish. Change it to the object, the second cloner, <clears throat> and a sphere as, and uh, it's not important. You can, no, disable, no. We can hide it <clears throat> of the render and the viewport. And of course, you can hide the uh, sphere. So we have a cloner here. And we have a plane. We want to inherit or change the this cloner to the sphere. So it's very important the primer, the primal uh, <coughs> cloner that has been have to be selected. And after that, you can select inherit. We click in, drag it here to organize something better. And inherit uh, inheritance in effector. Here we have all other settings that you know it, but the most important here, inheritance mode, there's a direct or animation. I'll explain the animation in the next example. <clears throat> but you have to give an object here. Which object? The object that we want to, for example, we want to inherit the plane to the sphere. Which sphere? The cloner of that sphere. And we have to uh, activate the morph motion objects. An interesting thing happened here. In a cloner, we have to make it to the vertex. And go into the inheritance, inheritance and change the strengths. An interesting thing happened like this. As we can see, we have a plane with a cube that we change it, transfer it to that sphere. This is most, most use, usage of this, that I will be, give you an interesting example by counter down to three to one numbers I explained. You can animate the strings here to see other oops, effects. This change it to the 100. Another curve frame. Oh, what happened? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
you have to keyframe from there, not here. The first, I forget that. Change it to 100, click here. And then you can, in this situation, going back to the zero and clicking here. And you can see this animation. Nice. And here you can add to the disk cloner another delay effect. It's very interesting. Okay. In a delay effect, you can change it to the spring. Okay. Uh, in the inherent, you can assign it more faster. Okay, this is one of <coughs> the main purpose of the inherent. So, another example here is just assign some another example. Uh, we have this. Okay, in the filter or plane, I can assign cloner to that. <coughs> end point and add more and we want to inherent a position on animation of another object to our cloners so we assign another object here that we want to inherit the position or rotation of that to the clone select the cloner inheritance in the inheritance in a direct mode you can assign the object that you want to inherit its parameter to the cloner. Here it's clone. The first thing that you can see it, its position is snapped to the dead inherent. Okay, this is one of the just example. Uh, another thing here, you can uh, activate the animation of that object. Okay. In the animation of that object, we need to give an animation to the, this object. Go into the transform mode and the rotation and keyframe it from here. Then go into the this mode, change it and keyframe it. Okay. And going to the inheritance, we are in animation. Don't forget to uh, increase the uh, counter to a strength to 100 and as you can see the animation with the uh, offset will be inherit to the cloner if you go to inheritance as you can see we have a end animation here you can change this number as a frame for more speed animation you can assign the uh, a step gap if you want or loop the animation like this and or animation to in or animation out like this you can see the difference but interesting part here is transform space it gives you to the generator it means whole uh, um, effector whole uh, cloner or node one by one if you want here you can change node or generator. Okay, so this is an animation. Inherit the animation of this object to the whole cloner. This is all animation. So, but the most usage of the useful for this inheritance mode is direct. So you can change the direct or change the animation if you want it. Okay, this is an inheritance. It's very easy. Hello my friends, to continue these tutorials on YouTube, subscribe us, like us, and hit the bell icon. And now, you will be alerted about all of the amazing videos that we release.